the Windrunner could very well be the next largest aircraft in the world. Oddly enough, it's being built to transport wind turbine components. It can directly transport to many different sites. But is it the versatile answer for heavy transport aircraft? And is it truly a feasible design? The world's biggest aircraft is obviously a big claim and this would immediately be contested by the iconic Antonov 225. Many people remember this iconic aircraft carrying the space shuttle clone titled the Buran. It made its entry in 1988 and can carry over 280 tons, which was substantially more than any other military transport ever produced. It would carry things such as generators, turbine blades, and even diesel locomotives. Yet, its engines were far from being the most powerful. It was built in the Soviet Union in the 1980s, and at that time, there were not really any engines that had really high thrust ratios, such as the latter GE90. And that's what makes the 225 so unique, is that it had to carry six turbofans at around 51,000 pounds of force each, yet it had a total takeoff weight of around 1.3 million pounds. The Goliath was destroyed in the Ukraine invasion, with estimates around 500 million to replace. This is an important number because it demonstrated that the aircraft was exceptionally rare, but also expensive to build. The straddle launch is even considered to be larger than the 225. With a wingspan of around 380 feet and a payload capacity of 250 tons, it truly is one of the behemoths of the sky. It is indeed a very strange design, but it makes sense because it would protect the aircraft in launching rocket-powered craft. So in the future, it could launch orbitable reusable vehicles. Parts including the engines, avionics, flight deck, landing gear, and other systems were all sourced from 747s. This was to keep costs down, and it partially attributed to the weird six-engine configuration. There's not a lot of margin side to side on the runway, and it requires over 12,000 feet to land. And it would definitely be a good idea to avoid major crosswind. In 2019, this craft was actually sold for $400 million with additional assets. This re-emphasizes the point that these one-of-a-kind, very large aircraft are very expensive, and it is very challenging to even design. The Windrunner is a bit of a mix between the 225 and Strata Launch, in the fact that it's a cargo plane, yet it's dedicated towards one task. It's 80 feet longer than the 225, but it has a considerably shorter wingspan when compared to the Strata Launch. It would be dedicated towards transporting wind turbines, and with the ability to land on a 6,000 foot runway with a 1,200 mile range, it could land directly onto the site. It also is dependent on what type of component is it actually transferring. It is true that it could transfer a blade at 300 feet long. A glass fiber would roughly weigh around 50 tons with carbon fiber weighing a little bit less. This could be mounted to a 10 megawatt turbine. However, when you look at the other subcomponents, such as the gearbox, generator, drivetrain, and brake assembly, then we are talking about different weight distributions in the subcomponents. Even the generator can weigh up to 300 tons for a single 10 megawatt unit. And that could be very problematic for this type of aircraft. There will definitely be a little bit of integration when it comes to land transfer. So maybe there could be smaller components such as the generator or gearbox which are transferred by land. So the feasibility of actually developing a plane for transferring wind turbines is still debatable. And it doesn't even mean that it will reach remote locations or even over water. An alternative is to develop a heavy cargo airship. The Flying Whale's cargo ship is a hybrid electric platform lifted by 10 helium cells. It will be over 300 feet long and lift roughly 28 tons. But the end goal is to actually develop a 200 ton ship, so it could eventually transfer 8 megawatts subcomponents. Maneuverability is a very critical attribute of this type of aircraft, so it's going to be outfitted with a turbine generator with vectoral and reversible engines. But when we compare this to a CH-47 or a Sikorsky S-92, it is considerably cheaper. But the largest wind turbines will likely still be handled by ships with very large cranes. A 14 megawatt nacelle can amount to over 600 tons, and it's likely out of reach for any type of aircraft. One of the biggest hurdles to the Windrunner is probably the cost. The company has raised $100 million, but just for comparison, a GE9X at $42 million and four of these engines would amount to $160 million, with the average cost of around $400 million for the AN-225 and the Straddle Launch. We are looking at a very expensive plane, but 
it is practical in some sense because we look at the blades and how difficult that is to transfer on land with tight corners, bridges, and traffic, so it could make sense in some applications. The airship may be something used for more remote, smaller turbine components. But I think in the end, when we look at the biggest turbines in the world which are offshore, then aircraft, no matter if it's the airship or an airplane, are not going to transfer these subcomponents. But more importantly, I would like to know what you think about all this. So please leave a comment, like the video if you enjoyed it, and also make sure to subscribe to my channel.